Hello guys, welcome to another video in the Flexbox Biosci series and in this video we're going to be looking at the properties for the flex items within our flex container. Ok guys, so as we learned in the previous video, once we create this flex container here, all the direct children inside the container now become flex items and then with properties like justify content and align items we can move these three, uh, three items around um, along the main axis and the cross axis. But what's also really cool about Flexbox is that we can even manipulate the flex items inside here, inside the flex container, as they also have properties and values. Um, so with these, with these properties and values we can change their dimensions, we can affect how they grow, how they shrink and control their spacing and layout inside the, inside the container so that's what we're going to be doing now and the first one we're going to be looking at is flex grow now what flex grow does is basically it just gives the ability for these flex items to grow and dictate the amount of available space we want it to take up so as you can see here our flex items have a width of 150 pixels now this is a fixed width and the items actually can't grow any larger than this now the problem we got here is that we've got all this free space next to the items uh, which you can see is pretty ugly and just not really a good practical use of that space and we want to get this filled up now this is when we bring in the flex grow property so what we're going to do is go inside the boxes class and uh, where the comment flex box properties is and then just put in flex grow one and as we do that you can see now that the items have taken up all the available space and it looks pretty good now a good way of looking at the value of flex grow so this value here um, is kind of looking at it as like a growth rate so it's essentially what's happened here is that these items here have grown at a rate of one now this one isn't particularly important and you can pretty much put any digit in here so if I could put in here 1234 and nothing would change because they're all growing at this rate of 1234 uh, inside the container that's why they're um, that's why they're distributed equally inside here now growth rates become important when we want one of our items to grow at a higher rate than the other ones so what we're going to do is just get rid of this flex grow here and then we'll go inside flex item 2 and then just give flex uh, flex grow 2 now you can see that flex item 2 takes up twice as much space as the other two items now this is not necessarily twice as big but the growth rate now is twice as much as the other flex items so if we open this up here uh, wider in the browser you can see now that it's grown at a bigger rate than the other two flex items and that's essentially how flex grow works guys and um, we use it to expand elements into the available space and the rate we want it to grow at is dictated by the value um, we put in here now the next property we're going to be looking at is the flex shrink property okay guys, so to demonstrate how flex shrink works what I'm going to do is just give some extra high extra width sorry to the flex items just so they fill up the available space and they're equally distributed um, as we saw with flex grow where the items grow into the available space at the rate we set out in our values now with flex shrink as you might have guessed just pretty much works the opposite of flex grow so what I'm going to do now is just go inside each of the flex items um, and then just give them a flex shrink of one or a value of one for this one for the first one and then for the second one I'm going to give it a flex shrink of two and then for the third I'm going to give it a flex oh, flex shrink of three now you might not notice much because um, flex shrink hasn't actually been triggered yet however when we start shrinking the screen you'll notice that they shrink at different rates and it now becomes obvious which item has the highest shrink rate um, which is obviously flex item three so an equation we can lay out is pretty much bigger the shrink rate, uh, bigger the shrink. And it should be noted guys as well that the children are relative to each other. Um, so if I pull this back up here and then I give flex item 1 and 2 the same shrink rate, they'll be relative now and they'll shrink at the same rate. Whereas flex item 3 will shrink at the rate of 3 or any value we set. And that's essentially how flex shrink works guys and to be honest I've never really used uh, flex shrink before uh, but just wanted to show you guys how that works uh, if you do if you guys find a good reason to use it then most definitely use it and the last property we're going to be looking at guys is the flex basis property so how flex basis works guys is it basically just defines the default size of an element before the remaining space is distributed and this can pretty much be any length and it could be in pixels in percentages or rems and pretty much works the same way as min width so to demonstrate this I'm just going to comment out the width of each of the um, boxes or in the boxes class and then I'm just going to give them all a different basis or a flex basis so I'm going to go inside flex item 1 I'll just give this a flex basis of 100 pixels and then if we go inside flex item 2 give this a flex basis 
of 200 pixels and then we'll do the same with flex um, item 3 but give this one a flex basis of 300 pixels so essentially what I'm saying here is that the base width of all these flex items now I want flex item 1 to start a flex basis of 100 pixels which it has same with item 2 but 200 pixels and then same with item 3 which is 300 pixels so the base uh, base width of these is the value that I put in here now if we apply a flex grow here of two, of 1 you can see that they appear to have grown differently uh, despite having an equal flex grow value and that's because the flex basis here is um, all, all started at a different base width um, which you can see here in each of the flex items now you're probably wondering what's the difference between flex basis and minimum width well wonder no more because there is actually a subtle difference um, so if we comment out flex basis in each of the items here and then we just give this a minimum width of 150 pixels uh, just comment out this as well let's give them a minimum width of 350 pixels so when we start shrinking the screen down you can see down at the bottom you'll notice that the scroll bar pops up um, and, this, and this, the reason this comes into motion is because they all have a minimum width and once that minimum width here is triggered um, you won't be able to see them we'd have to scroll to see the rest of the flex items whereas if we put in flex basis so if we give this change this back to width 150 pixels and comment this out and then uncomment these you'll see this isn't the case for min, uh, flex basis um, it's much more responsive and no scroll bar will appear and that's essentially how flex basis works and the little key difference between the two so to be honest with you guys writing all these properties out is a bit long winded and luckily for us like many CSS properties there is a shorthand for these three and it's called flex so if we go inside the flex container and go on the flex box properties again and instead of putting flex grow we just put in flex type in one and now the items will do the same thing um, so the first value represents flex grow and the second value will present will represent flex shrink and then the third will represent um, flex basis uh, to be honest these two are optional these two values um, having just one uh, works perfectly fine and to be honest guys you probably most of the time just see it like this now the last property we're going to be looking at guys is a line self now to demonstrate how a line self works guys I'm just going to add a bit of height to the flex container so we're going to give it a height of 600 pixels again and just similar to how we could align and place the items around um, with align items and justify content we can align the flex items in here individually and what we're going to do is just demonstrate how that works now so we'll go inside each of the flex items and just put in here align self and we're going to put this one as flex start and this doesn't change because it's already at flex start then we're going to put flex item 2 as align self into the center and now the element is positioned in the center of the container and then align self in flex item 3 will be flex end and as you guess now the position now the element is positioned at the end of the container and as you can see guys with just a few properties and values we have powerful aligning capabilities and again just pretty much shows the power and simplicity of flexbox but that'll be it for this video guys so I hope you've learned a lot from this video and in the next video we're going to be putting some of these properties we've learned in the last couple of videos to practical use and as always guys if you do like the content please hit the like button and please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one